It's the last game of the Premier League for Luton Town on Sunday afternoon as Fulham are the visitors to Kenilworth Road for what is our swan song to the top flight. Uh, to preview the game alongside me, I've got the Lutonian journalist James Cunliffe. Jimbo, party time on Sunday, mate. Let's go out with a bang, shall we? Absolutely. We'll do all of that after this intro. Welcome along to the last Premier League preview episode of the Luton Town Supporters Trust podcast for a while. Um, Fulham at home, Sunday afternoon. We don't yet know the TV games, but pretty obvious that it'll be the title contention rather than the relegation issues that will be uh, on TV. So if you don't have a ticket for the 4pm kickoff on Sunday, sold out already, you're going to be uh, reliant on the radio and everything else for that. The last dance, Jimbo. Didn't really want it to be like this, but we've taken a few days. We've come to terms with it. We're all cool with it. The important thing is that we go out, we show the players what they mean to us, like we did at the end at the London Stadium on Saturday. We send them off in style and we just remind the Premier League that we'll be back. That's the main thing, isn't it? It's a complete dead rubber. Um, I don't... I think yeah, We're not even going to entertain <laughs> this 12 goals turnaround nonsense. Know, Joe, Joe Payne's not around. It's not happening. <laughs> I don't know. You've got to have hope somewhere, haven't you? Um, you do, but <laughs> it's not on this occasion. No, no. Unfortunately. Hey, listen, yeah. if we're back next week reviewing a 12 goal swing, happy yeah. days. I'll, I'll but we're you. not going I'll there. Your hat. Yeah, we're not going there. <laughs> no. um, yeah, it's, it's about the bigger picture, isn't it? As, as we said in the last podcast. Um, you know, there wasn't. There's, there's going to be frustration, um, which we'd all have felt on Saturday um, and maybe over the weekend. But by the time this game comes around, I don't think it'll be that. It'll be um, the the reaction at the London Stadium, but in the Kenny, and um, yeah, it's it's going to be an emotional one, I think, isn't it? Because we all wanted it to be. Uh, the, the final game that, that decided things. Um, and it, it's not going to be that. It, it's going to be a, it's going to be a pre-season game in it really, but um, you, you've got to start somewhere for for next season. And if, um, if Vincent company and Bernie started on, on the Sunday as per his interviews, then um, yeah, you've got, you've got to start now and it's uh, hopefully a chance to, you know, give give the proper send off to some players that I think, you know, we haven't got the confirmation yet, but probably won't be there next season. But have been a massive part of the journey. Yeah, if the release thing, if the release list hasn't come out by the time you watch this podcast, uh, we kind of hope that it does come out ahead of the game because there are a lot of stalwarts, for the want of a better word. I kind of hate that word. It's just a nondescript word, really. But it's certainly doesn't do the justice of the impact that those people that I'll be referring to have had on this club but it's important that we as fans get a chance to say goodbye to them on Sunday because they haven't just represented our club they've done more than that they've gone above and beyond they've re represented our club in three four I don't think it'll be five but three or four divisions they've lived the highs they survived in the championship when the club could have been under serious pressure had it gone down that season because of the pandemic. They, they've brought into all of it. So if these guys are going to leave, and, and I think certainly one or two will because they're out of contract anyway, then it's important that us fans get the chance to send them off. We don't want one of those Jonathan Smith situations where he was allowed to leave having been a, a huge player in the conference and the next time we get our chance to thank him is when he comes back with Stevenage with another club or Alex Lawless when he came back with Yeovil. We don't, 
these kind of these players don't deserve that. And I know it's not necessarily the way the club works. The club's kind of takes emotion out of the equation and things. But I just think on this occasion, emotion should go into the occasion because there's nothing on this, you know. And and if and I don't know for sure, but let's say James Shea is one of the players who's leaving. Let's be in a position where we can bring him on for the last couple of minutes so that he gets in a stand innovation and and everything else. And, and whoever, some of them were, are injured. That's unfortunate. We can't do nothing about that. But there are some that aren't. And they deserve, a, a, we deserve the chance to thank them as much as they deserve the chance for us to thank them for everything that they've done, particularly if they were involved last season, uh, getting us promoted. Um so hopefully, yeah, hopefully that release list does come out or even if it's just a few early names so that we can give them the send off they deserve because they would deserve it. Yeah, 100 percent. It's um, it's not a day for worrying about what the result's going to be, um, although you've still got a vested interest in getting the right one. and We'll come to that. Um, you you, you want to go out with a, a really positive performance, hopefully a win, but ultimately it's about... Um, recognition of what this team has done in the season they've given us and yeah it's, it hasn't ended the way we wanted but I think everybody even the real cynical people and, and there's not that many these days thank god I think if you dig deep you can you can find that you've got nothing but pride for this lot yeah absolutely you, know, you should have nothing but pride for this lot um he was always going to catch up with us eventually, wasn't it? You know, the rise was so quick, so stark that eventually we were going to hit a bump in the road and we've hit it. Um, but that's all it is, as we highlighted in the last podcast. Fulham. God, I hate this lot. <laughs> that 7-0 still rings true in my memory. And I know it turned out good because we won the next game. We made the playoffs, which in itself was uh, an experience that we didn't like. We never seem to beat these buggers. I think it's 1998 the last time we beat them. Drawn with them uh, the last two games at Kenilworth Road. To say we're due to beat them, though, would be very, very true. Quarter of a century since we've beaten them. Very different fortunes, though, in that in that time, isn't it? Really, um, they've they've come. They came from nowhere during that time to establish themselves as a Premier League side for a while, and then dropped out, and then gone back in, and then dropped out, and then got back in. It shows you sort of what, what what can be done because they're by no means the biggest club in London for well, a host- historic club obviously um, very good cottage pie in the press box and all <laughs> can have a swimming pool on their rooftop now as well aren't they yeah what can have a swimming pool on their rooftop stand ain't you seen them ain't you seen all the mocked up plans uh, that is bonkers what <laughs> Wait, exactly. yeah exactly that's what that new stand's going to contain a swimming pool on the rooftop apparently it- Far, far-fetched days from the cottage that's, in the corner. That's mate. taken me back. Why do you need a swimming pool on the rooftop of a... In case it's as hot as it was on Saturday and everyone can have a dip whilst they're... Oh, could, you, you, could you imagine a cold February in a in a pool by the by the River Thames and the way the wind whips off yeah, there? Yeah, they're not selling it to me on uh, that day, anyway, but they anyway. might, might sell it to me on a day like Saturday. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah. The one thing from that, though, most teams that get into the Premier League have to step back before they go again and mm. establish themselves in the Premier League. Very, very few Brentford and Brightons it around that do it and just keep on going. Mm. So it's not the worst. From that point of view, it's not the worst thing. And Fulham are now an established side. They were in the um, semi-final of the Cup earlier on this season. They should have beaten Liverpool, really. If Deco Dover Reed squares it for, I think it was Pereira in the middle, they go 2-0 up at Anfield. Mm. And they're in absolute control of their own destiny there. Uh, last season, they were on the fringes of the European places, weren't they? Albeit with Mitrovic in tow. He's taken the Saudi cash. And now it's Rodrigo Muniz has um, appeared from out of nowhere, really. He'd been loaned out here, there and everywhere. He's now the main man. He scored a lot of goals in the second half of this season. And um, he's the he's the, he's the the guy that we need to keep under wraps if we are going to win this game. Yeah, he's like all, all, all teams in this division. They, they seem to be able to get goals from most a lot of places or, or be very ruthless if you're thinking obviously Suchek scores that screamer which effectively relegates Luton um, last weekend and he's supposed to be a defensive midfielder they can all do it and that's the difference in this league isn't it but um, if you can if you can put together a, a performance of the ilk of you know the bulk of the first half at West Ham 
um, and against Everton, then it will be a it will be a decent final day of the season. And it's, um, it's it's very strange after the last couple of years to have nothing on it, but um, that's where we are. And uh, let's just hope that it's as celebratory as it can be. Yeah, we're not going to touch too much on Fulham. This is our last Premier League game, so we're going to focus on Luton. Albeit, I will just say Issa Diop got sent off against Manchester City late on. He won't be playing. That's a defender gone, so uh, that might make it a little bit easier to get after them in the back line. Albeit, you know, that was Manchester City who tore them apart. Um, Not necessarily us. Uh, Team changes in the sort of... Well, it's not going to be many team changes, are there? Because we now know that we were official with the squad that we had... At West Ham, that's it. There's no more coming backs, uh, and you wouldn't bring them back now, even if they could come back. It's a nothing game. There's no point in risking them getting an injury that delays their preseason. Anyone who's injured, there was talk of Mads and Marvelous at one stage. Just, just be back for preseason and um, and go from there. But it would be nice to see some of those that have brought us on the journey uh, get a longer role. So a year, Luke Berry's. Pele Rudder Companzus. I mean, Dan Potts is out injured, so we can't do that. As I mentioned earlier, if, if we can get to a position where James Shea can have a quick cameo so that he gets his Premier League experience, I think what he's done with the club, he would merit that. I can't remember if he's played in the Premier League when he was at Arsenal. I don't think he has. So it would be good for him to get the Premier League ball and everything else. If we can get into that situation, I don't think too many fans would mind, even if it does mean that ultimately we don't go out with a win. Yeah, I mean, it means nothing, does it? A win, or it's not going to have any bearing on the, the the next season. It's going to be a totally different kettle of fish. It's yeah, I think it's about um, the emotion of the day, isn't it? Really playing the emotion of the day right. And, um, yeah, it, it would be good to see those guys because um, they've been a massive part of this last ten years. I mean, we should say there is something on it in that it's something like three point two, three point three million for each place that you go up the league. So if we can hold Burnley off, and actually, ironically, we want Notts Forest to win now, don't we, on Sunday, so that it keeps Burnley down. It's another 3.2, 3.3 million, whatever it is, that could be a player next season. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Um, so we're not... So com- there is something. Yeah, we're not completely... <laughs> I mean, we're not staying up. Yeah. But if Rob needs some incentive or, you know, fans need some incentive to hope that we... Go out with a win. That could be it. Listen, it doesn't really. Ca- it's only really Gary Sweet, the financial director, and the recruitment staff that are like, oh yes, we'll have that extra three point two million, whatever the number is. I think it's somewhere in that ballpark, but it changes on a seemingly reporting daily basis, doesn't it? So, so, so I wouldn't want to like bring all of these players that I've just mentioned in from the start. I'm not saying like Luke Berry should replace Ross Barkley if Ross Barkley's fit. We don't know at the time of recording if he's fit or not. He obviously went off with a calf injury on Saturday and I'm certainly not advocating Sambi Lakonga miss out because we have to say thank you to him on Sunday. That is for sure. But if we get to 20 minutes to go or whatever and the game's starting to meander along like these last games of the season does, like when last season we brought Joe Johnson on and things like that, that's when I'm sort of advocating doing that again. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I thought that's what you meant in the first place. Yeah, I just have to confirm it on the, inter- yeah. on the internet. You have to yeah. confirm everything yeah. these days, don't you? Yeah, um, and I don't, I don't necessarily think that uh, there'll be much of a shock at the other game that, that has any bearing on it, really, because I think that Burnley had to get something out of Spurs to take it to that last game to to really have a go and as much as it pains me to say it, Forest were pretty decent against Chelsea and created umpteen chances really so I think the, the pressure's off them uh, and they're at home in, uh, as well aren't they so um, I, I, I don't think it will change from that perspective but you've got to maintain a um, what is it what's the what's the phrase the integrity of the game you've got, you've got to maintain that and play your best side I think and I, I don't anticipate that it would be anything but I think probably the only change would be if Barkley isn't fit which would be a massive shame because um, you'd want to if it is to be his last game um, then you want to give him the send off I mean I'm sure he'll be out on the the lap of honour and stuff like that but just to see him one more time and do a little pirouette or rake a 60 yard ball to somebody so he can go ooh (laughs) Just uh, to see him shine yeah. one last time 
I mean, when we look back, we'll do some sort of season review. We're not sure exactly how we're going to do it yet. The timings are very, very weird at the end of this season uh, with another bank holiday weekend straight after um, the big weekend and everything else. And we've got holidays and summers and jobs and everything else. But we'll do some sort of season review and that will reflect on just how much we've enjoyed watching Ross Barkley. But if we get to do it one more time, it's meant to be sunny on Sunday. Sunshine, Ross Barkley, football. Who knows if there's any drinks offers on the go as well. It might have some stock to get rid of. You never know. Um, you owe me a drink, didn't you? <laughs> absolute, sh- absolute shocking um, statement. Um, <laughs> but whatever it is, it'd be great to see him one more time, wouldn't it? Uh, don't worry. I, you'll, I'll get your drink. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, you've got it on record now. You can't back out of that. It would be great to see him one more time, though. Yeah. Well, no. It'd be great to see him a hell of a lot more than one more time. It'd be great to see him at least one more time. Yeah, absolutely. I really hope he stays. Um, you know, the he, he's he's obviously come out and he's declared his love for the club many times. I think he's found his passion back for it, back for football again. Not that he necessarily lost it, but that he wasn't getting the game time wherever he was at, at Chelsea and at, and at Nice. And he's come back here and he's he, I think he's fallen in love with the game. I think a lot of the time fans go well he said that then that must be a good thing but he's also a professional footballer who wants to play at the highest level so if something if a team comes in then I can see him going but if he does stay in if he stays in the championship he'll have a whale of a time in that division I'm convinced of it same agent as Kean and Jewsbury Hall who's just tore up the championship come on Mr Agent <laughs> do your thing we know he's under contract so if he leaves then we're going to get a transfer fee for him. It's, I think it's going to take a real club to get him out of here. I really do. He posted on Instagram, didn't he, on Sunday, how he's proud to represent this club. Uh, you know, And he, like you say, he's spoken in the past how much he owes the manager and the club and everything else. Uh, he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who's going to leave for Ipswich. Who did No disrespect to Ipswich, I just plucked them out of, as a promoted side. Um, yeah, I think it would need the Manchester United rumour to be true or someone of that ilk for him to leave. And even then he would need guarantee of first team football. I don't think he's leaving to sit on a bench somewhere. Uh, that's the thing that sort of plays into the favour of the whole um, Willy won't he argument, isn't he? Because he's 30 years old. He's just played nearly every game in, in the Premier League for, for Luton, loves it. If he, even, if he, even if Man United did come in for him, he wouldn't play every game. So will he be back in the same scenario that he was at Chelsea? Um, and I don't know much about his time at Nice, but um, obviously one season there and, and back to England doesn't suggest it was the most uh, successful time. Um, so there's th- these things to weigh up, isn't it? Whether, whether you know, that, that love for playing for the club, but also pretty much being the main man, whether that is a, a, a great arm around the shoulder to a, a player that, you know, probably hasn't hadn't lived up to his full potential because he he went to Chelsea where umpteen millions of players have gone and got swallowed up because of that of that club but yeah let's let's hope we, we can hope but, but you like you say if he, if he goes there'll be there'll be money um but if he stays the championship's just going to get a hell of a lot more exciting than it is at the moment. That is for sure, yeah. Um, that's a summer thing. God, we'll have two months of this summer transfer um, malarkey once we've got the season out of the way. Fulham, you can you can definitely get at this Fulham defence. You absolutely can. You do have to bypass Paulinho in the middle. He was meant to be going to Bayern Munich at the start of the season, wasn't he? Looked like that was all over and he was going to Bayern Munich. And then they pulled the plug on the last day and decided to sign Eric Dyer instead. I mean, I don't I bet, quite know. But they wish they hadn't now. <laughs> yeah, I don't quite know how that one worked out, but it didn't work out too favourably, did it? Um, but if you can bypass him, then you can get after these. Actually, when we played Fulham down there, it was in our transition period in this league. Yeah, we, we were the better side. How we lost that game, I do not know. We had that brilliant chance with Brown's header hitting the post. We had... Amari Bell hit one straight at the goalkeeper just after half time and Tom Lockyer missed an absolute great chance. Tom Lockyer on the football pitch, those were the days, weren't they? Mm, yeah. um, missed an absolute great chance towards the end and Fulham scored a rebound off of Kaminsky, didn't they? Vinicius, I think it was Carlos Vinicius, I think it was, who scored on that occasion. But we were the better side down there, and that was long before we transitioned into this team. So 
there's nothing there that sort of stops us from going out on a high. It's not like Fulham went and plundered God knows how many millions in January and became a better side. They're without a win in four, admittedly the last one against Manchester City, so call it without a win in three. Ironically, the last team they beat was West Ham, who we've just lost to, but we'll pass that over. So it is still a good final day. It's a good final day where we can express ourselves, where we can remind everyone once again, just in case they've forgotten what we've brought to the Premier League and we have brought so much to the Premier League. And it's also a perfect fixture for us fans to have a right old party. Get behind these boys, let them know once again, as I said at the start of the podcast, remind them just how much they mean to us and uh, you know, and just go out on a high. It's not the celebration that we want it to be, but we can still celebrate the fact that we've had a season in the Premier League 10 years after we weren't even in the Football League and the incredible story, the greatest fairy tale and everything that goes with it deserves a celebratory send-off, even if it's not to stay in the Premier League. Yeah, absolutely it does. I, I, I see it, and I said it in the previous podcast, that um, it's the, it's the sign-off on a wonderful decade. And and now we've got another one to, to plan for and... It's going to be, it's going to be exciting as well. I mean, there's not going to be as many promotions because uh, hopefully uh, it will be Championship or Premier League. But uh, there will be a new stadium. There will be a new sort of not I don't want to say lease of life for the club, but a new era. That's it, a new era for the club, and and uh, a positive one at that. Um, to to be in this position where you're looking at everything that's so positive off the pitch and the, the future that's really bright is remarkable. When you're talking about a, you know a relegation being confirmed because it's not been confirmed yet. <laughs> I know they say that and they won't give you the R yet, but it is, it is because of an eleven goal swing needed. Is eleven? Is it more? I don't Twelve, know. 12, I think. Now, yeah. yeah. Um, it is. It's relegation. But the last time we experienced relegation and, and, and as some didn't. Some some young younger people, younger fans didn't. They never they never experienced the the, the dark day that was that being kicked out of the football league. Um, it, it's completely different. This will be the most different feeling and afternoon compared to that Brent that afternoon at Griffin Park in Brentford in two thousand and nine mm. that it possibly could be. That was horrible. Mm. They they'd already won the league. They were taking the piss out of a team that had been beaten with God knows how many sticks into submission. That was horrible. This isn't like that. This is just, we've done our time for now. We step back, we go again. But the good thing is, it's, so much of this squad will still be intact. That was never the case in 2009. We were losing most of As it turned out, we didn't lose as many as people thought we would lose. And credit to Mickey brought in some astute players for that following season, the Kevin Gallons and the uh, everyone else of the world. Although he was uh, there uh, towards the end of the two thousand uh, of the relegation season, most people expected him to go and Tom Craddock and, and all that lot. And, and maybe that in itself is the comparison that we didn't lose as many in 2009 when the club was not even on its knees. It wasn't even that high up. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now, now that the club's in a much more stable footing, if we can keep the players when they've just had a season where they had no chance, if we can keep them then, surely we can keep more of them when they've seen the potential that we've got in the Premier League. We've just got to get back to it. I mean, we don't know the ins and outs of it because they keep these uh, cards close to their chest about the contracts and the lengths of, lengths of them, but they pretty much gave new contracts or you know signed them up to a different uh, contracts to pretty much the whole squad, and they have no doubt that they've put proper clauses in there that that mean if anyone's going they're going to have to it's going to be a benefit to Luton and stuff like that but, um, so yeah no 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 problems with that and yeah you're right if I remember rightly on that that Brentford game back in 2009 they were singing we'll never play you again went well didn't it well they did they did play us again we have played them again unfortunately they beat us a lot but we did play them again and uh, so I don't think that will happen against Fulham because we'll be playing them again you know, I wish they were right. I wish we'd never played Brentford again. <laughs> 7 0, 5 1, and then for all the other copious defeats in between. Something about West London, isn't it? Fulham, Brentford. Mm. Ugh. Um, yeah, so we're, we're kind of expecting the same team as the one that started at the London Stadium, aren't we? I don't think it's a point in bringing Chio in to start now. 
He's only going to make things worse. Presumably, he'll have international commitments during the summer. Oh, not, I hope not. Just give him a rest. Well, indeed, but, you know, <laughs> Ireland... It's, it's international commitments that made him not be available for the last three months. So. Absolutely. But, you know, Ireland are rebuilding, aren't they, under Roche or whoever it may be. So I would imagine he gets international commitments. So they might as well just save him for, for those. Bring him on if he is Fred who starts right wing back. Do you know what? This is a perfect chance to play Hashi, isn't it? You know, he's been ridiculed, he's been wronged. We've explained all of that in previous podcasts. Here's a chance for the first time, Hashi, in a no-pressure game. Go and show everyone what you can do in their net rather than in our <laughs> one. And um, show us the player that we think we're signed because chances are you're going to be a key feature next season. That's, that's exactly it when you're talking about giving players that have got Luton here, but it's also a chance for players that, can show what they can do next season. And that probably goes for him and uh, Joe Johnson and maybe Zach Nelson. He's injured. Oh, yeah, of course he is, yeah. We spoke to him, didn't we? Silly me. <laughs> I mean, he might have recovered. He did say it was only a slight yeah. niggle, but I think there are other midfielders ahead of him that would, if we're going down the parting route, yeah. it'd be ahead of him. I don't think we're pulling up too many secrets that Fred Onyadimba won't be here next season. He wasn't here this season until the absolute bare, bare bones arrived. I don't think he was one that's given a new contract. I'm pretty sure he's out of contract in the summer. We will release Fred on your dimmer. Therefore, it doesn't make a great deal of sense to start with him. Again, bring him on, or if we don't bring him on, have him part of the lap of honour. But if Hashi's the future at that right-back situation then it makes perfect sense for him to play in this game, doesn't it? You know, the, I mentioned in the last podcast that Gary Sweet will have started work on next season on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're starting work on next season on Monday morning, let's include this, like you just said, competitive pre-season friendly. Let's give our players the opportunity, you know? Yeah, and certainly for Hashi, give him a go in the position he was thought he'd be playing in. <laughs> he only managed to play there once, hasn't he, in, this, in, in all his appearances. And um, somehow found himself as a centre half against Erling Ireland and stuff. Like that. I'm sure he didn't have that in his um, in his wish list when he came over to England. But um, yeah, it's it's one of those days to do some experimentation, but obviously to try and get a decent result to send off the season. Yeah, decent result would be nice. Um, as I say, you do get a financial reward if we finish 18th. Might not be much, but ultimately, again, you know, 3.2 million. I mean, what's that? Two thirds of our transfer record paid, mm -hmm. you know, and it looks like we're going to get four, uh, four, four and a half million back on Ryan Giles as well. So you put the two together, you've already got an eight million pound windfall to go in the championship before you've even looked at your parachute payments and everything else, assuming Rob's allowed all of it, which I presume he would be if indeed he needs it. So there, you know, that that immediately kind of gives us a head start on sort of some of the sides, particularly when you think that a week after would be the championship playoff final. So whoever loses in that game is, you know, at a disadvantage already. And let's hope that's not Leeds. Please go up Leeds. You're the furthest, right. you're the furthest one away oh, of the right. three, okay. of the four for starters. <laughs> and we've lost the £30 ticket cap now in the championship, haven't we? And Leeds tickets, I've seen some of the numbers doing the rounds and they are eye-watering for second division football, let me tell you. So, uh, Please go up, Leeds. <laughs> you know, let that song not be right. Don't fall apart again, Leeds. Um, go up, go on. And Norwich, you know, nice. West Brom, nice and local. And we haven't been to Southampton for a while, so that'd be all right. Um, yeah, so there is that kind of financial reward. But So it would be nice to go out with a win. But let's just make it a kind of a, a party, really. A party for us in the stands. A party for those that are leaving us to give them their final good memory of being at this club because it is a special club. We saw it on uh, Saturday afternoon. They know it's a special club. They're all involved in the playoff celebrations and everything else. But particularly those ones that have come with us right through, they did, they just deserve that send off. They really do. They do. And um, I, I don't know about you, but I always find the last day of the season there's always a tinge of sadness there as well regardless if if it's going well because you know one one got promotions and 
won titles and and uh, all sorts on the final day of season, but which is positive. But then there's also a, a sadness as well because you know you're not going to be that back there for a while. And there's something in me that always goes, "You might never be back here." <laughs> and there's a little voice in the back of my head: "You might, you'll never be back here, so enjoy it." <laughs> Well, they might not give you press accreditation <laughs> next season, so you might not. Spoiler alert, they will do. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, what's what's the game? May the 20th, something along that. My dates are all over the gaff at the minute, but somewhere along those lines. Football season starts on August 10th. It's a better part of three months. Of course, we've got the Euros to look forward to, and there's a couple of uh, looting players that are going to be going to the Euros. Yeah, that always softens the blow, doesn't it? That yeah. you're not going to be able to... I mean, but it's about being in Kenilworth Road, isn't it? It's... The, it's that place is so special. I want to be there as much as I can. And when you can't for three months, it's, it's, it's a bit sad. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, back in the day when the season tickets used to be a book, when you was ripping the last ticket out of the book and you're like, ah, that's, that's it. And, and this season has gone so quick. Mm. It really hasn't felt like a season at all. Uh, we were talking about it in the car on Saturday. It feels like yesterday we were on the train to Brighton. Well, actually not on the train to Brian because everyone was at a standstill on the station because some <laughs> idiot was in the tunnel. But it, do you know what I mean? It's just flash past this season. They all seem to get quicker these seasons, but this, and I know there's eight less games yeah. before anyone. I'm well aware that there's eight less games, but it's still the same length of time from start to finish. Just whizzed past. Yeah, well, I think that probably happened, A, with age, and we're knocking on, but yeah, you play one game, mostly one game, you have to wait another week for another game. So that doesn't help. And the championship, which obviously we're going to experience again, is a bloody slog. And you're not going to London six or seven times a season. You're going to Plymouth and uh, Sunderland. And, All right, yeah. hold, hold, off, hold <laughs> off on that until next season. This is meant to be a party uh, party podcast. We don't need, uh, don't need to worry about <laughs> Sunderland and Plymouth and the likes just yet. And you haven't even gone through the longest one yet. So, uh, yeah. The only other thing to say about Sunday, the players will do a lap of honour after the game. Please stay off the pitch. And I don't think anyone will necessarily go on the pitch this time. It's not like we've won a league, like you say. It's not like we've qualified for the playoffs or anything else like that. But the boys deserve their family on the pitch with them at the end of the season. The families are so crucial to everything that they do, particularly Rob. Uh, Trolls and Richie, you know, they, they give up an awful lot of time. They're not local. Uh, they were away from their families a lot. They deserve their families on the pitch with them to take in the adulation that they're going to get. So, you know, uh, I'm sure you'll get all the reminders, but please do stay off the pitch. Maybe if you go on the pitch, they can do one of them light shows and it'll put you off from going on the pitch again. Cause oh, please don't do the light <laughs> show again. Please. I mean, you give it a go. But no, not for me, mate. No, same with, same with me. Yeah. So uh, after the game, I'm sure the players and everyone will do a lap of honour. So yeah, do please stay off the pitch and let them do that. Uh, and we can give our appreciation to them off of it like we did at the London Stadium on Saturday. And then we'll go home and that will be the end of the Premier League for Luton Town for a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's sad to say. And it, it is, we, we thought it would be different. But um, yeah, if you, if you go back to the last podcast, the, the West Ham review, there's so much, but there's so much positive stuff that's happening for the club and the town. The overall picture is uh, is better. It's bright. It's just the, the football side of it. For a brief time, we'll get over it. Well, I'll say I'm pretty much over it anyway. Yeah, I am and, too. Um, I was we'll once I got on the train yeah. Saturday. To be honest, yeah, this wasn't ever a relegation that was going to hurt. No. I didn't want it because I quite enjoy watching world class football. And like you say, the championship is a great league. It's a competitive league, but it's a bloody slog of a league. I think it's 10 midweek games. You know, it's it's, yeah. a, it's, an, it's an awful lot to get all the way around the well, country and do it all. Going to win a few more games as well. That always helps, doesn't it? It does, <laughs> we hope. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We hope we're going to. Um, but, you know, I, it's it, it's disappointing, but we've, let, we've outlaid all of the positives that are going to come from from the relegation and we'll enjoy all of those um, but we'll enjoy Premier League football one last time uh, against Fulham on Sunday afternoon before we finish this podcast it is the final score prediction of the season this is what they're all here for Kev this is the main reason this podcast needs to be watched because 
unless you get this right, I'm going to be crowned the champion. It's about time you're champion of something, mate. To be hey. fair. Um, <laughs> how does it finish, Luton v Fulham? How does the Premier League era finish? Uh, Eleven nil to Luton. Could you just imagine? <laughs> could you just imagine that? The only thing is, if Luton go 11-0 up, you just know Forrest are going to get a result and scupper it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no. I mean, I'm not going to change my scoreline, but 11-0, uh, but let's have a bit of fun, shall we? I mean, we owe him seven at the very least, don't yeah. we, after that debacle around this time a couple of years ago. Um, these end-of-season games with nothing on them, they either fizzle out into something crap like that game against Hull City did last season when we were waiting for the playoffs to come along. Or their absolute goal fest. I think didn't West Brom and Man United score five five on the last day of a season once? Something I'm pretty sure in Ferguson's last game, I think it was. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's anyway, this ain't gonna be that. We'll finish off the season with the town uh, traditional scoreline of three two. Three two Luton. And uh, that will get me a share of the spoils in the correction score in the correct score uh, standings. If you're gonna win Luton, don't do it like that. Have a nice 1-0, 2-0, something like that. Don't give him anything. I've got to, I've got to win this. 3-2. Got to give me something. <laughs> Don't waste the clean sheets now. Don't need the clean sheets now. Save the clean sheets for next season when we need them. Go out with a 3-2. Mm. No, I'm sticking with my original score. <laughs> Listen, I hope, you're, I hope I lose the correct score thing 3-1 because I hope that we do win 11-0 because if we do... I'll have the old Burnley game on the on the dog and bone, and I'll be the biggest Burnley fan going. Spoiler alert: neither's going to happen. If that does happen, don't expect a, a post match podcast for about two weeks because I don't think I'm going to be sober. Two weeks yeah. will be the other side of the bloody Euros before <laughs> yeah. I've before I've come back down to earth. If that happens, um, I, do you know what? Do you remember that League Two final day two or three seasons ago when Northampton and Bristol Rovers and there was an eight goal swing? Yeah, yeah. Eight's happened. Twelve is beyond it. But there was part of me on Saturday just trying to tot up the goals and well, can it can it be eight? At least we've seen that happen, and at least you can do a team talk. Well, it has happened. You can't do it for twelve, can you? But it's not happening. It's gone. And we're fine with that. We absolutely are. Let's have your score predictions. You've got an extra day to get your score predictions in for this one. Sunday afternoon, uh, the game, of course. Uh, if you get any correct uh, answers, we will give you a shout out in the review podcast, which will be out slightly later next week. We're not recording the review on Sunday night. We will take a bit. Well, it's, there's going to be no time anyway. It's going to be six o'clock by the time the game finishes, by the time James has got all the reaction and everything. There won't be no time to do um, a review. We're not going to do an instant reaction. The players are going to come around uh, at the end of the game. That's going to delay things even further. There's nothing on it. So we won't do an instant reaction like we did for the Everton game. So the reaction, po sorry, the review podcast will be out next week, but probably just 24 hours later, Tuesday, uh, Tuesday morning-ish, where we'll look back on the Fulham game. And we'll assess uh, parts of the season. And we'll, as I said, we will do a full season preview, sorry, season review. Albeit we're not quite sure when. We'll let you know during that Fulham review. Yeah, but if you're subscribed anyway, you'll get it all. Well, yeah, it will drop into your inbox and you won't have to do anything. Absolutely. Yep. That is very, very true. Jimbo, thanks for your thoughts as always and for previewing every single game that we've done this season. We've previewed every Premier League game. We've done the Bournemouth away game twice and we've done some of the FA Cup games we're well into the 20s yes sorry into the 20s into the 40s for match previews this season mm. and we are currently 2-1 for correct scores yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the one with the two just remember that you are the one yeah. with the two I got annoyingly I got out in front <laughs> yeah. and much in keeping with the looting You've pegged me back and you've gone on again. Exactly. Just hope you don't score a third. Well, I know. I hope you do score a third one uh, on Sunday. Yep. So get those correct scores in. Uh, and like I say, as always, we will give you a shout out. Thank you to everyone who has commented on our preview podcasts throughout the course of the season. We do this for you guys. So we really, really do appreciate all of your thoughts. 
And until that review time, we say thank you to the Hightown Club for staging our studio, as they have done throughout the season, to Sean Grant and the Wolfgang for the intro music, which has been so popular for this season, and to Ed Smith Creative for all the designs that you've seen on set throughout the course of the season. For one last time, this is it. Come on, you actors, let's finish with a bang. Everyone in it has got this massive soul.